go. What's up, guys? Um, this video here is going to be a tutorial build, sort of. Um, I'm doing two tanks right now. They're 44 inches wide by 17 inches deep by 24 inches tall. Um, a little different size than my previous tanks, but um, I think it, you guys are going to like it, and um, I think it was worth it to do the bigger size. I think it's really going to show off the frogs that are going to go in there, which um, I'll get into that later. But um, before we go into the tutorial, I do want to tell you guys I've made a couple changes to my tank design from the how to build your vivarium um, video that I posted, you know, last January or February, whatever it was. Um, those original tanks, they had a two inch uh, or an inch and three quarter vent at the doors and they had a four inch vent at the, uh, on the top, on the lid. Um, and I changed, then I built 10 tanks after that and I changed the venting up a little bit. I did an inch and a quarter at the door and two inches on the uh, lid, but still too dry in the garage in the winter time. The summertime it's fine, but in the winter time I have a like an industrial resiner heater and it's just very very um uh it works it's very it works very well and it dries it out in here really bad um even with my pump going my miss king water and i have a pump circulating that water it's still really dry in here so um i made the vents on the new tank um an in inch even at the door and an inch on the lid so I'm hoping that helps out keep it a little more humid while also keeping the doors clean because in the in the winter time you can see all my tanks over here they're completely fogged over and that's because I have the vents taped off because it just lets too much air in and it dries the tanks out and I do a lot of breeding in the winter time because I'm not working as you guys know my work schedule is pretty light in the winter time so um, I do a lot of breeding of the frogs and I, I don't breed as much in the summertime but that being said, um, the other change I made on these two tanks uh, is the substrate dam, which is the basically the, the dam on the front of the tank that keeps the substrate from coming out. Um, normally it's a 21 and a half by six inch piece. These ones I made four inches tall instead of six inches, um, meaning that the door is gonna be taller. It's gonna allow for more um, viewing of the tank without that that black line um, kind of breaking up almost the middle of the tank it's gonna be at the bottom and I think it's gonna be less uh, obstructive with your view it's gonna make a better overall experience as far as viewing the tank um, so I did do that and I do like it a lot better so um, without rambling on too much more uh, I don't think I have anything else to let you guys know um, so let's get into it all right Here's the tank on its back. Again, it's 44 inches wide by 17 inches deep by 24 inches tall. And you can see that substrate dam is four inches now, not six inches, so you should be able to see what I'm talking about. As you can see, I already did uh, foam this side panel last night. Um, I did foam it while it was on its side, so the foam wouldn't run everywhere. And now it is dried and cured, so I am about to lay the foam on the back. And um, as you can see the difference here with the six inch substrate dam and the four inch substrate dam, it just allows a lot more viewing. So um, I'm going to apply the foam to the back here and pretty much repeat the process, let it cure for 24 hours. So here we go. And I'm taking my jolly old time, getting over to the tank. This is uh, <laughs> one of the few clips where you'll actually see me doing some work. Um, and not just explaining what I do and then showing what the result is. And when I say doing work, I'm giving you the full thing. Shaking the can up, opening it, everything. So, um, when I'm applying the foam, when it's on its back, I actually try to lift the foam, like the, um, the applicator. I try and lift it off the glass. I don't want it actually on the glass. Um, unless like I'm doing like there you can see I have it against the glass and I just I'm very lightly letting the foam out you can see there's not a ton of air coming out you can tell by the size of the foam bead um, so I'm just trying to like really seal the, the, the corner gap and now you can see here I'll start letting loose and really let the foam flow as the kids like to say these days um, I 
I left some gaps in between here, and I probably should have left them because it, it, the foam does expand, and it most likely would fill those holes. Um, I actually go back here and fill those in. I'm not sure it's completely necessary, but um, I really just want to, I guess, ensure that there's no glass peeking through. It doesn't matter because this tank is getting high grill on over top anyways, so it would cover any glass that would, would be showing through anyway. But um, I just wanted, you know, a full... A full blanket of foam, if you will. Um, you can see there's no rhyme or reason or method to my madness of applying. Um, I'm just kind of going at it and trying to fill as much space as possible with using um, the littlest amount of foam to see how far I can get one can to stretch. As you can see here, I got uh, maybe about, mm, about 34 inches, I'd say. Um, well, Actually, probably about 30 inches because there's about two inches. Two inches of the tank on the side is already taken up by the foam. Um, and you can see that ah, I've got about, I'd say, another 12 to 14 inches left that I'm going to have to do. So this can has run its course. I'm going to shake off the remaining turds that are going to flop out of here. I absolutely, I'm, I'm actually surprised I'm not wearing gloves here. I hate getting great stuff on my hands. It is such a pain in the ass to get off. Uh, same thing with Gorilla Glue. They are not easy to remove. Sorry about my phone going off. I'm gonna silence that right now. Grabbed another can of foam and it is, repeat the process. Shake it up a bit. I don't, I mean, I think the can says shake it up for like a minute or 30 seconds. I shake it up for like 10 seconds. It doesn't make a difference. Um, I do shake it pretty vigorously, and I'm a big, large man, so um, shake it up pretty good. Uh, now let's go back at it, and we're off. I do want to talk about something that's pretty important as far as laying down the foam background. Um, not so much laying down the foam, but after the foam is laid down. Um, over time, many of my tanks, and I know other people as well, the foam wants to separate from the glass and pull off the glass. It kind of shrinks and wants to pull off the glass. It creates gaps and cracks where um, frogs could potentially get back behind there and trap themselves and kill themselves and that's a bad day for everybody. So what I do to kind of resolve this issue or at least it has resolved it thus far and I haven't had any issues since is I lay a bead of silicone um, along the edge of the foam and the glass where they meet. Um, I don't show it in the video, but I do do that. And then I take a glove and I smear it around to kind of make a seal or a barrier um, where it, if the foam wants to separate, it's, it's going to have to pull the silicone off the glass as well. And we all know silicone likes to stick to glass very well. So um, it's kind of going to, it's, it's going to keep that even if the silicone does pull off in certain areas, the edge where it meets the glass should stay attached, not leaving any gaps where frogs could get behind and trap themselves. You could use the black or the clear silicone. It doesn't make a difference. Touch base with you guys on the next step. Um, you guys are aware of my normal method of carving foam. I usually use the, um, whatever you want to call them, box cutters, snap blades, razor blades, whatever. But they um, normally that's what I'm using to carve. And... Um, on these two tanks, I did a new method, and I used this wire brush drill bit attachment. Um, it's about $3. I got it from Walmart, and just attach it to your drill, and do, it on the, do the drill on the drill speed. Um, and it makes a really cool texture. Um, it does give a really even surface. You can, or, or surface, you can get it all pretty level. Um, Really cool texture, level surface, and um, it does speed up the carving process. I mean, five times as fast, I'd say. Uh, I had all three panels on this tank um, done in about five minutes. Um, now, I will say, the biggest con by far of this method is the mess that it makes. It, it is a disaster. Um, don't do it on any nice carpet or rugs um, just because foam little pieces are going to fly everywhere and get stuck into things. Um, have a shop vac ready and um, yeah you're going to 
probably clogged that shop vac um, more than once. So um, that's by far the biggest downfall of it. But uh, I, I do think it's worth your while to do this. Um, like I say, because you'll see here in the, in the video in the next clip um, what the texture is if you just apply the dry lock to it rather than the Hygrolon over top of it. Um, it's a really cool texture. Um, I still did it on this for the Hygrolon because I wanted a really even um, even level. It's uh, better than carving by hand. Carving by hand still is cool. Um, you can you, you have more, I guess, freedom and you, know, you can do essentially whatever you want, um, but it takes a lot of time. And also, this method's a lot cheaper. You know, this is three bucks. Um, I already have the drill, so I don't have to buy the drill. These, I mean, I go through 10 to 12 on a tank. Um, so that's, you know, at least 10 to $15. So cheaper to do this method, quicker to do this method, method, but it is way messier. So I just wanted to touch base with you guys on that before I showed you guys what I do here. And, um, yeah, that's it. And you can see here I've already gone ahead and shaved the foam down. And you can see the big pile of mess it leaves in the tank. Um, it does get everywhere. So have a shop vac ready. And there's the wire brush. Here's my drill. Um, I do it on the drill setting. But, uh, yeah, you see here it's it's really easy to do. Um, you just kind of, I'll show you in a second here. But um, it leaves a really cool texture. And if you do want to add the dry lock over top without using Hygrolon, this is what the texture looks like. It's really natural looking and... I just think it looks really, really awesome. You can see I've already gone ahead and done that tank. I didn't do the tutorial on that one. I was going to do the tutorial on this one. So, um, I'll give you an example of what I do here. You can see the shiny foam there. And the, you can still see like the, where it would come out of the applicator. I just go ahead and see it right there. You can see the shiny foam. And three, two, one, and it's gone. So, really easy and really... Uh, effective method of shaving foam, but you can see the mess it makes. So, like I say, have a shop vac on hand, but um, I do think the mess and the time saved is worthwhile. So, uh, I'm just going to show you here this lovely, lovely mess. I mean, I, I clogged my uh, shop vac like four times, so <laughs> just be ready. Don't do it on like a nice carpet or nice rug, it'll be vacuuming that thing forever okay uh, here I am misting the foam I am about to apply the Gorilla Glue and before you apply the Gorilla Glue you do want to have the surface a little bit damp um, it does say that in directions and believe me it makes a huge difference so um, just mist it lightly um, you know I did the back panel a little bit too just because I'm, I'm gonna have the Hygrolon go all the way to the corner and kind of wrap around but uh, I'm mainly just going to be doing this bottom panel here. So grab your Gorilla Glue and have at it. Just start squeezing like crazy. Now, I will say, if you've got a uh, large amount of Gorilla Glue on hand, it's probably easier to just screw off the top and just kind of dump it, because um, it doesn't come out of this hole very easily. Uh, you have to squeeze really hard, and it's kind of annoying, and it hurts your hands after a while, but um, I only had two of these small cans. Oh, they're not small, they're eight ounce. Um, but, um, yeah, so I was trying to make it go as long as possible and hit as many nooks and crannies as I possibly could and get into all the little crevice, crevices that I could. And you want the Hygrolon to adhere really well. So anywhere where there's big dry patches where there's no Gorilla Glue, Obviously, the dry lock will not uh, attach there. So, um, what I do to really ensure that there's sort of Gorilla Glue everywhere on this is um, I am going to put on that black plastic glove there, and I'm going to just kind of smear it in everywhere. And believe me, you're going to want to wear gloves because Gorilla Glue is a nightmare to try and get off. Actually, you just can't get it off. You have to wait a few days and it just kind of falls off from your body's essential oils and everything like that that will uh, just kind of make it fall off you. <laughs> but it's it's a disaster when you get it on your hands. So 
wear gloves. I like the nitrile gloves. Um, these ones just happen to be black in color, but they are 70% thicker than the regular gloves, so they can stand up to quite a bit of wear and tear. Uh, so as you can see here, just keep massaging it in. And um, yeah, anywhere, so you can see here, I didn't think I had it on this corner here, so I figured I'd add a little strip there. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a, just lay it as you're, as you're going. Um, anywhere where you think that the Hygrolon isn't going to stick well, um, just lay a, lay a dollop down or a streak down and rub it in and just keep on going. So, um, but I do try to pay attention to the edges uh, more so than the, um, like you can see there's some bare spots in the middle here, um, but the edges you want, you don't want the Hygrolon to separate from the back, from the foam along the edge because that means frogs could get back there. You don't want animals to be able to get behind anything. Once you see that the Gorilla Glue looks like this, then basically you're ready to add the Hygrolon. It's really frothy and sticky and tacky, and you're just gonna end up massaging the Hygrolon in, which you'll see in this next clip. I didn't see the need to bore you guys with this, so I sped up the speed a little bit. But basically, I'm just packing it in. Um, note to everybody is you're going to want to have some sharp blades to cut through Hygrolon. It is not an easy material to cut. So either have some fresh, sharp scissors or some fresh, sharp uh, snap blades, and you'll be good to go. All right. I've gone ahead and repeated the process on the back panel and on the right panel. And yeah, this is what it looks like. Pretty junk. It looks pretty trash. So um, any white spots where the Gorilla Glue does come through the mesh, um, I just touch it up and I hit it with some dry lock and cement color and it hides it really well. Um, you won't see it in the long run anyway. So yeah, at this stage, it does look trash. I'm not going to lie to you. But the end result, I think you guys will be pleasantly surprised. So this is the next new thing for me that I've never tried before. It is like a pond filter material um, that I'm going to be using as the drainage layer and also um, substrate as well. This tank isn't going to have substrate. Here you can see the texture. Um, so I'm doing a thing that I've seen some of the Europeans do where they don't seem to use substrate. They just use this mat. Um, you can add more mat and make it high, like higher levels. You can carve it, um, and then they just lay moss over top of it. It seems to grow really well on it. So, um, and obviously it's going to drain well. You can see here I've already carved this one um, and shaped it. I didn't add any levels to that yet, but um, I'm unsure if this will be successful or not. But as you know, everything I do, uh, pretty much trial and error anyhow. So let's give it a shot. And here you can see I've kind of made the initial layout of the terrestrial area and what's nice about it is if you want to have water on the front um, you can make a nice smooth transition um, by just carving it so uh, moss laying over top of this should look pretty neat so I just wanted to share that with you guys and now the next step okay now on for the fun stuff this is by far the most enjoyable part of the process for me um, it's really where the creativity and set up layout of the background really starts to take shape and um, I have a local aquarium store in Pittsburgh uh, I'm in Ohio but I'm about an hour from Pittsburgh and 
they usually have a very good selection of driftwood and this is the Malaysian driftwood I believe and it lasts for a very long time in my tanks and it's reasonably priced and I don't have to pay the ridiculous outrageous cost of shipping it so um, hopefully you guys can find local shops like that around you that also have nice pieces of wood and they don't charge a arm and a leg for it so <clears throat> Um, as you can see here, I am now foaming around the wood. Um, this is kind of my base piece I'm using here. I want it to really be the anchor of this corner, um, and I will be able to build off of it. So I'm really just um, laying down some thin beads of foam to start building up a edge where I can seal off um, the wood to the background so there won't be any gaps again where animals could not get behind so you really want to be sure that there's no holes or gaps anywhere where the foam meets the hygrolon um, or where it's meeting the ground either you don't want them to get under that because they can get stuck um, and they can kill themselves so nobody likes froggy suicide so um yeah i'll speed up the process here a little bit so you guys don't get bored to tears As you can see, I didn't record the entire process of me figuring out my layout. Um, I was just kind of having at it, and um, obviously, like I said, I get immersed in the builds, and I kind of forget to hit record on the camera sometimes. So that's exactly what happened here. But I'm still just uh, plugging some holes up. You can see I added that one piece of wood. I kind of connected it to a protruding piece, and I'm just really foaming in between any little cracks where they meet so I can create a nice sturdy um, connection between the two and uh, let's see what we have next here I'll move over to the other side and see what we're getting into I'm really just playing with wood <laughs> seeing how I want to do it um, if I want this I'm glad I did not choose this initial piece here. Um, I ended up changing that piece that I was just tinkering with and I made it go a different way. I also used this in a different piece. Um, you're really going to have to play around with it. Um, don't just rush into it and start foaming um, unless you really think it's like a solid, solid design. Play around with it, check all your pieces of wood and um, make sure you're going to try and find the most interesting composition. Um, that's what I do. I don't like everything to be completely like it would be in nature. I also use my artistic background and try and make things compositionally interesting while yet still looking natural. Hmm. Okay, I didn't get any of this in the video of me carving the foam after it's done, but um, the easiest way I found to carve the, the foam that's around the wood is with your fingers. Um, literally, once it's cured, just grab it and pull it off. Um, if there's certain areas that are really hard you can't get your fingers to, to grab, um, use pliers or some sort of wire cutters just to grab the little piece, tear it off. Um, it creates a natural looking texture and carving around wood with an actual blade can be a real pain in the butt. Um, and also the drill, um, you could use that method, but those little fuzzies are going to get all in that substrate um, or the, the sponge filter material. So um, I just literally grab it with my fingers and tear it off. So that's what I would do. And here we have the final layout of the wood on the background. Now, getting the wood to protrude out like this can be challenging. The best way I found is to wrap, wrap duct tape around certain like edges where it's protruding out and um, then kind of taping it up to the top piece of glass um, and kind of on the very top like going through the vent um, and then you kind of it's a it's a balance and um, just making everything secure it can be a little tedious and frustrating but um, 
I think the end result does make for a very interesting composition. And these tanks are going to be housing Ufaga histrionica, and we all know how they love to walk. And I think these long wooden planks will really show off their strut quite well. At least that's the idea. And now we have moved on to the dry locking the foam portion of the build. Uh, this can also be messy, so I would wear gloves. And basically, you're going to use the original dry lock in the gray color. And what I do is I mix um, the brown cement color that's made by Quickrete right into the dry lock and mix it around. And you're literally just going to use some cheap paint brushes you buy from Walmart and paint it right onto the foam. And when I say paint, I mean sort of paint. What you're mainly doing is dabbing because the texture isn't great for painting. It's very rough and coarse and um, there's lots of little holes and pockets everywhere. So you can see here I'm vigorously dabbing um, the dry lock into the place. So um, what I do to kind of make a natural look so it's just not all the same exact color, um, I do have the black um, Quickcrete cement color as well and I'll just dab the paintbrush in a little drop of it every once in a while to make dark areas and um, Anywhere where I want it to be lighter than the brown color that I've made, I'll just grab a dry lock right out of the bucket. So you'll see sometimes I'm dipping into that uh, fruit fly container that I've used to mix my paint and substrate in, or sorry, the uh, dry lock and cement color in. Um, and then there's other times you'll see me go kind of off to my left and I'm actually dipping the paintbrush directly in the five gallon, sorry, I don't get five gallons, I just get a one gallon um, bucket of dry lock and literally just take the brush right in there, come back with the gray color and then, because this, it takes a while to dry, so you can mix it pretty much right on the surface you're doing. Um, you can take gray color and you know, it's, mix it in with the brown and then you're just going to get a lighter grayish brown color. Um, that's going to make for a more naturalistic looking um, surface where it's got different tones and hues and different shades. Um, so that's what I do, and I think it works out really well. So um, I'll walk, let you guys watch this for a few minutes, and then I will speed up the process and fast forward so you guys' heads don't explode.
friendos want to thank you guys for staying tuned for this lengthy video i hope that you learned something from it and hopefully you're inspired to use some of these new methods i'm using into your upcoming bavarian builds and uh, until next time take care be safe happy holidays and goldberg out